as we cover many an insane movie and numerous cult TV phenomena. Are you ready to get jacked up? Are you with us? Then listen on. back to the show it's my buddy jeremiah pierce <laughs> hey hey and then we got friday uh friday nightmares podcast heather powell how are you <laughs> hi thanks so much for having me guys wise yeah and bff kyle hickman from munson's at the movies <laughs> hey guys happy to be here all righty and we are diving into <laughs> a canadian set and made mockumentary show that is trailer park boys <laughs> canadian treasure absolutely <laughs> i don't i'm just quoting my review here there is no way to watch the show and not remember the bizarrely inept traits of each of these individuals <laughs> true so i will circle around how we got into this cult hit uh kyle you're the biggest fan even going so far as to cosplay how did you discover uh the one and only ricky and julian and bubbles and company <laughs> i'm not gonna wear any uh any flags that say i'm the biggest fan but i am a big fan i got into trailer park boys well probably like four or five years ago not i wasn't paying attention in its early days in the inception but the first episode i ever watched i got hooked it was the first episode of the series with with cyrus and running the trailer park <laughs> i grew up in a trailer park for the first 12 years of my life and so I knew right away a lot of the little nuances and in intricacies were so accurate for trailer park life. And I was like, oh, I'm going to love and hate the show all at the same time. <laughs> every archetype you could imagine is prevalent. And it's just such a great, light, quick watch with silly ass characters, memorable characters. And ever since then, I've, I've been a big fan of the show. I've dressed up as trailer park boys for two different Halloweens. I did Bubbles one year with this and i did jim Leahy another year and um ever since then i've i've just been a fan huge fan i rewatched most of these seasons while i was recovering from knee surgery so i'm fresh i'm 11 <laughs> 11 uh seasons in so i'll give the floor to others though excellent uh heather uh when did you decide you were gonna commit to watching this show <laughs> well i've watched it on and off for years um i don't know kyle if you're canadian or not um, I am. I'm from Ontario, and uh, it the Canadiana in it is vomity, but hilarious at the same time. Um, I have been out to Nova Scotia, which is where this is filmed. I take and, it uh, you know, every time uh, Jim Leahy or Cyrus appear on uh, on Stephen King's Haven, which is also shot in Canada. I've actually never seen Stephen King's Haven. I think you'd dig it. <laughs> oh, I'll have to check it out. Um, so I watched this show when I was real young and like all the seasons. And then I rewatched them uh, two years ago. I watched all the seasons and I watched the movie as well uh, to help prepare for tonight. The original movie, the 2006 mm. one, um, nice. which I like, I found even funnier as an adult. Like, honestly, mm. like the part where he gets, um, Ricky gets bottles thrown at him in the first. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> I was dying. The, kids. Um, the strip club scene when they get pulled over by the cops in jail. Like, there's just so much mm -hmm. of it that's so funny. So I'm happy to talk about it with other people that enjoy it. Heather, what? do you have your grade nine? Do you have your grade? I nine? I am my GD. Oh, that's good. Cool. <laughs> Go. Go. Glad to uh, hear. Excellent. All right, Jeremiah. Uh, 
did, were, did you discover it on Netflix or had you just always kind of heard of it on cable TV airings or? <laughs> uh, I yeah, I saw it on. Uh, I first learned about it on uh, on Netflix. I had heard about it, uh, you know, from a lot of different people. So kind of a recent thing, about like you know, two or three years ago, I think, when I heard about it, and okay. so. So, I was hooked from the first episode. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I was the same way. I, I knew it was on Netflix, but I'd always heard about it in pop culture and people were sharing gifts and like the early, early stages of the internet. And I was just like, ah, where, where can I find this show? And I, just, yeah. I, I, I never could find the DVDs because I take it, you know, they're just out the wall, just, you know, 40 bucks a piece. But uh, I, I knew it was happening because the first movie just made the rounds and just all the magazines were covering it and reviewing it and i mean i got vibes of caddyshack when i first got into it uh my brother and his friends recommended i check it out and instantly i was hooked uh but yeah i saw ivan reitman co-produce the first movie and i was like yeah I, this is this totally makes sense because you know he's a canadian filmmaker and it's just got that kind of same kind of just unusual just quirkiness to it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, some of it's improvised, cool. some of it's legit, you know, and they actually built their own set. They bought a trailer park to it. <laughs> and it, it's kind of wild how, you know, it came out between, you know, Spinal Tap and The Office and all these other shows that were trying to experiment with kind of the whole mockumentary. But, you know, it kind of wasn't as big a thing, you know, for the most part, they were just kind of doing kind of what Larry Saunders did, where they just had just showing behind the scenes of a movie studio or something like that. And it's so cool to just see again, a bunch of these ex cons who just, you know, you had the whole scenario. Are they going to go to jail this season? Are they going to break out of jail? Are they going to just go on a random camping trip that ends in disaster? You don't know. And it's just a great disaster. You can't look away from. <laughs> so I'll circle around again. Who are our favorite characters? Kyle, <laughs> if you had to pick one. <laughs> Ooh, that's so <laughs> you know you the more you watch the show you learn to appreciate different characters for very different reasons uh I'm, here i'll say this i think the most important character to the show um and i i don't think this is a stretch was jim Leahy because he is the antagonist of the show and the fact the entire fan base after he passed away rest in peace said, you know, you guys should evolves. do any more seasons <laughs> of the show because without Jim Leahy, it takes on a whole different life. Yeah, Bubbles, Julia, Ricky, they're all hugely important to the, to the show and the narrative. Uh, but I would say Jim Leahy just because I, without Jim Leahy, it's a completely different experience. And, uh, and uh, John Dunsworth was just such a pleasant, lovely human. He was not... He's the exact opposite of his lady character in mm -hmm. life. He didn't drink at all. Like, the, just the nicest dude in the world. So, that would be my favorite character. And dressing up as Jim Leahy for Halloween and walking around and yelling shitisms everywhere I went and shit games <laughs> was the most fun I've ever had on a Halloween. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, so, uh, Heather, uh, what character would you like to actually hang out with if they were real? Well, I really like Kyle's definition of Jamie Leahy, and I couldn't agree more. I think he really did make the series, and it was a real loss when he passed away, unfortunately. So if I if I remove him, just because Kyle did such a good job of talking about him, I would say <laughs> Jillian. I love the fact that this dude carries a fucking rum and coke everywhere he goes. Like, I found that hilarious in the series, and then just re-watching the movie last night, and literally, he's driving, and they're like, is that a rum and coke in your hand? <laughs> He's yeah like, ricky goes off that he's deaf and mute and oh my god like it's always just... asking these loaded questions and sometimes <laughs> it's sexy even though he's the, <laughs> right even though he's the opposing force at the time he pretty much just shows what assholes you know ricky and the company can be <laughs> and it's it's so i think it was funny. season two was it i think it was season two where they flip the uh the what the RV deal and he gets oh, yeah. out and it's just perfectly <laughs> filled up. Like they just turn this thing upside down and he just walks out with a perfectly filled <laughs> rum and Coke glass. And you're like, I appreciate that. I respect it. And for me, and it, and I found this line funny with 2006. I found it funny two nights ago where he gets, at least I walked in with this rum and Coke. This is my rum and Coke from home that he tells <laughs> the bouncers yes. at the strip club. 
Oh, oh my gosh. God. Like, it's just, and then when he goes to jail, I forgot about him drinking potato vodka in jail, which was mm-hmm. equally as funny. Uh, so definitely, you know, Jim Leahy, no one can touch him. But if I went to my second character, it would definitely be Julian. Oh, even better. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Jeremiah, if you had to pick just one character to just ca- catch a burger and a Coke with, who would it be? <laughs> Opia Collins. You know it's got to be J-Rock. Uh, I was thinking Oi. the same thing. We just, we, I just, so that's my same pick. So I'll do a roundup of the characters again. We got, aside from Ricky, Julian, and Bubbles, uh, we got their girlfriends, Lucy, Sarah, Candy, and Officer Erica. We got bisexual ex-cop turned drunk park supervisor, Mr. Leahy. <laughs> His shirtless, cheeseburgering, eating, gay whore assistant, Randy. <laughs> this is not a politically correct show, guys. So, um, amateur rappers and porn producers, J-Rock and Tyrone. And uh, park owner, Barbara. <laughs> Black market, Dr. Sam. The always profane, off-screen neighbor, Donnie. <laughs> uh, and then we got... Uh, Local inept cops, uh, Green, Johnson, and Daniels. <laughs> the Fall Guys, Trevor and Corey. Uh, the truck driving dad, Ray. <laughs> Ricky's younger daughter, Trinity, who wants to break the law just like her dad. And <laughs> recurring crime lord, lord turned bully, Cyrus. And uh, oh, yeah. And we can't forget uh, burping taxi driver and burger joint owner, like Kyle mentioned, Philadelphia Collins. <laughs> His two sons, Snitch Thomas and store clerk turned drug dealer Jacob. <laughs> I think that's uh, as much as anyone can possibly process for an audio review. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, it really is kind of wild how, I don't know, I just like, it seemed like this was around the same time as like uh, Broken Lizard was kind of doing a lot of stuff, like Super Troopers and everything, and I, I mean, I just can't think of any other group besides, I guess, you know, if you want to go with like classic Marx Brothers or even just current, uh, more current stuff, like something Dave Chappelle would have been doing around this time or uh, just uh, any other comedy duo is like, this was just so unreal to just like create all these fictional characters and all these actors just come up with just various just quirks to them. <laughs> and because, I mean, it's a comedy is just so hard. Like, how do you just like define it all make all the jokes gel and decide which ones to keep and which ones to just kind of be whatever with, you know? Um, and, and just to do dumb comedy. Cause it used to be is like, well, it's dumb, but you don't know if the people are in on the joke or not. It's like, these guys are legit in on the joke. And I mean, the fact that they got, uh, just all these real life celebs to play themselves. Like, you know, Sebastian Bach, <laughs> right? Tom Arnold, right. Uh, Snoop Dogg, and <laughs> all these guys, and they're all <laughs> visiting the trailer parks, and <laughs> having too much of a good time. And Jimmy Kimmel was doing that actual, just like set it up to where he's like he's capturing them and they're in character mm-hmm. talking to them. <laughs> it's like man. To be honest, I heard about the show but before I actually saw it. I didn't even know. It was a it was a pleasant surprise when I when I had first uh, when I seen when I saw the first episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you don't know what you're gonna get. You really don't. And nothing can brace you for all the just outrageous surprises. Like yeah, Bubbles is uh, as a whole farm <laughs> full of cats and is growing dope and McKinney like, call. Yeah, kitty, my god, my god, my god, my and, and yeah, and he voices the other off-screen neighbor, and so that's a funny kind of just dual role, because <laughs> you don't really no- notice that it's his voice that he's straining until you just on rewatches or when you get Jesus, fuck voice. boys, <laughs> right? right? <laughs> the thing that I really found funny about watching the movie from last night. So I don't know if you guys know, but weed is 100% legal in Canada now. You can grow it, you can buy it. Oh, it is. Can, Okay. Oh, yeah, like yeah. across oh, the yeah. country. So I have a fair amount of my house right now, and it's legal. So I was, was as I was watching it, I'm like, man, like these jokes don't land the same because Ricky selling le- weed in 2021 would be like, yeah, Ricky's selling weed. Like that's just 
what you do now. Oh, um, and I just love the timestamp of it, right? It's such a, <laughs> and, you know, being a Canadian, we don't have a lot of stuff that Americans recognize comedy wise. Like, you could argue Kids in the Hall and, you know, it's a good parallel. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> people kind of know what it is, but not tons. But when this I, came out and it had Canadian references that uh -huh. other Americans were learning because of watching it, like, even Loonies and Toonies, like, was huge. Like, they're big easy as they still a bunch of fucking Loonies and Toonies. And that's hilarious. Like, it's really, really funny. So, <laughs> And I probably still haven't gotten a lot of them over the years. They're just things I know, but I don't understand the cult, like, the cultural contextual reference to them. Yeah, they they do like I think in one episode they're referencing a bunch of anime is like definitely never seen the anime they're referring to, but yeah, then they're definitely referring to a bunch of American comedians and then Canadian comedians who aren't as is like unless you get Canadian TV you're not mm -hmm. gonna know unless it was on PBS. I think they even mentioned Red Green I think at one point. Yeah. Like, that guy don't yeah. know what he's doing. <laughs> so <laughs> Heather. <laughs> Do you just maybe out of ignorance, do you guys use hash coins to buy things in Canada? That's what I gathered from the show. All the Ricky time. would just buy things with hash coins all the time. All so I figured that was time. a thing. Yeah, like I have a bunch. I'm going out later to do my grocery shopping with it. Um, but I don't even know what hash coins are. That must be in one of the episodes because I don't remember it. Um, well, what was the hash yeah, coins? That's a good well, they, question. Was it around the same time when Bitcoin first became big? Or no, no, I don't think it has anything to do with Bitcoin. But <laughs> it, just, it was, it was like he would, he would give out, you know, hash little hash plugs and yeah. little hash coins. It and, was when and, he found uh, out he pay for stuff yeah. with, uh, with weed, basically. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and there's a mobile that app. I was able to for sure. If I could use hash I, coins, it's gonna take it. Right. <laughs> Have any of you guys played the mobile app, Greasy Money? No, the, no, I don't. Is that so a tie-in? Is it a what? Like a tie-in game to this, or just totally separate? Yeah, no, it's it's tied in. So it's uh, <laughs> they do special events, and like every event, basically you help run. It's a what's the term for those games where it's it runs itself? Um, idle. It's an idle game. And oh, okay. but every every event they change up the businesses. So it's a series of businesses that the the guys created at some point. So it's like the dirty dancer is one of the businesses. Like it, <laughs> you've got all, and it changes all the time. And like um, the, the honey oil factory. Um, and you basically, there's two characters for each one of those. You, the currency in the game is hash coins. And then you try to maximize how much money you're making from all these uh, not so legal businesses in the park. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's where they found a really cool way to like incorporate because yeah. there's so many characters right um, yeah like the mystic uh, what's the the one place where Don Donna and homegirl oh, and T ran it and you can get like petty Manny's what's that play their business called oh it's like a bridge or something like the, that yeah yeah so th it's it's like a fun <laughs> way to summarize all the random stuff they've made over the years that's great <laughs> yeah. It was cool. I did it for a while. I gave up on it after a little bit because it just became a lot to manage. No, it's all good. And I, I actually just binged through the... So, yeah, the, it ran for 12 seasons, seven on uh, Canadian TV, five on Netflix internationally. And uh, then they followed up with... They become a cartoon at the end of season 12, so then they followed it up with an animated portion, which ran for... Uh, two more years and basically used archived voices of Jim Leahy and he actually becomes a ghost in that one um, <laughs> and then and yeah I, I binge the te what's technically the 15th and kind of final season uh, called jail where they return to jail there's all these new guards and there is no drugs coming into the prison <laughs> so they <laughs> tragedy. are, they are tragedy. and they're pretty much making fun of prison movies as well as just other stuff and it sure. It's a lot of fun, <laughs> especially because Bubbles just keeps going in and out because it's like they'll get him and then it's like we don't got anything on him. <laughs> <laughs> he rarely goes to jail. Throughout he the rarely episode. goes to there. jail. And so it's just so funny. Very he's rarely. just nervous and he just doesn't look like the type who would just it just shows it just also what Tim what's the cops are. <laughs> The fact that they were able to just kind of keep doing these tour shows and these live shows is just also just very mind-blowing because, I mean, 
and currently their podcast is still going where they're mm-hmm. basically do assembling zooms but i mean they're still they're talking in character and i just find it just so just ingenious <laughs> yeah one of their live shows they sold actual like they were selling burgers on their show i thought that was hilarious oh really (laughs) yeah a dirty burger yeah (laughs) (laughs) Uh, that's great Um, they they found a niche for themselves they they're gonna milk that money pit as long as they can because it's it's fruitful oh don't know i had no idea what uh what honeywell was (laughs) so i i I never heard of that before (laughs) Honey oil, yeah, it's all yeah, sorts, that's... all sorts of variations on drugs I've learned from the show. One hundred percent, yeah, <laughs> all different ways that you can manipulate and make it and distribute it. I, you know, if you're taking notes on how to sell drugs illegally, this was the time to do it. <laughs> Figured all sorts of things. Maybe ways not to do it either. Because before there ready. was Breaking Bad, there was Trailer Park. Yeah, I was exactly. actually going to go into that. That's what's so true. Is like, did Walter White or Jesse watch the show and get inspired? <laughs> <laughs> and Is I it... think the show's so funny though because well you were in a you lived in a trailer park Kyle and I don't think uh-huh. that you met people all like this but there's always one character out of this that you'd like I met someone like that mm-hmm. I know someone like Ricky and I think that was a smart thing they did they had so many different characters that you could be like I've seen someone do that like even Ricky's dad being in the wheelchair and then standing yeah, up right. to rip it off his ability. <laughs> like, we all know that that exists and that happens, but they're being so blinked about making fun of it that I think that's what makes it so funny. That it's just like, no, no, this happens and we're going to, like, totally expose it. And and just in a way that's so comical. And I think that's why people could get into it. Um, totally. Not overly heavy, but just a lot of fun and just poking fun at everything. Heavy. Yeah, whatever Smokes. you... Smokes, let's go. <laughs> Smokes, let's go. Hey, I, I knew a J Rock growing up. <laughs> and, right? I mean, the show invites hey. you to just accept all the absurdity. You know, it's like, okay, Ricky's going back to school. That won't end well. But <laughs> his the, his failures are our enjoyment. And it's just so funny how they'll get emotional at some he, point. And he's always like, get over here. Just. Well, he tried, and then he figured he out he can, it's more lucrative to sell drugs as the janitor to the kids, you know? <laughs> right. It's a lot easier. You can... Yeah. Oh, man. He reminds yeah, me my, of all the guys. Thing. Sorry. I was going to say, <laughs> sorry. Uh, uh, I, I, I knew some guys in high school who I met later in college, and I couldn't believe it. Like, they were pursuing, like, a serious, like, career. I was like, really? You were the class clown. I didn't think you'd go anywhere. So it's just... <laughs> It's a good example of just how you just never know where someone's going to end up in life. <laughs> but yeah, no, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Jeremiah. Um, oh, uh, the, the Rickyisms, that's what I was going to say. The Rickyisms, yep. Yeah, basically anytime, uh, you know, like uh, keep your friends toes. Oh, no, he said keep your. Yeah, he said keep your. Friends. Always saying something the wrong toe to way. Sell. I fucking toe to sell. <laughs> yeah, toe to sell. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I call jalapeno jalapeno. I always will. It will always be a thing. <laughs> yes. Totally. Oh, man. And, what's jalapeno? <laughs> and I, I love how everyone practically got along on the show. Uh, like, the only person they had to actually let go after all was the actor who originally played Ray, Ricky's brother, uh, uh, father, because apparently he was just a very difficult to work with dude. <laughs> just, mm. like, lighten up, dude. I don't think anyone takes this show seriously. <laughs> Right. Well, a few, yeah, a few left on their own accord. Um, but yeah, for the most part, they didn't really have to fire anybody. Like Lucy left because of a disagreement with one of the producers, and um, what's his face that played, not Corey, but Trevor. Uh, Trevor left. Yeah. yeah. Oh, of really? Oh, well, yeah. Mm-hmm. One of them was like a grip or gaffer on a bunch of different blockbuster movies. So it's like he's doing this just for fun. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. And and, I, and so I wasn't surprised when he'd just make obscure just movie references and everything. And I'm like, of course, he's, he's working on movies. So, of course, he's the pop culture guy. And right. uh, uh, Kyle had the honor of summing up Elliot Page's resume. But, yeah, it's just so wild how... Trina. Yep. Yep. She was in five or six episodes in the early seasons as, uh, <laughs> as Leahy's daughter. Which is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah in, in her early right. Canadian days, Canadian television. Yeah. That's six years one before. of her. 
yeah, one of her early starts there. Yeah, it's just uh, it, it's it's such an interesting show from top to bottom. Like for example, I think it's season six. At, it's only a six episode run, and my understanding yeah. is it's so short is because they weren't sure if it was going to get picked up. And it's the only season where no one goes to jail at the end. Like it's just yes. everybody's really everybody. It's like a happy ending because they kind of thought the show was going to be over. And it's weird when you watch everything else now because all the other times it's you know they're trying to ship a bunch of drugs over to Sebastian Bach across the Canadian U.S. <laughs> border and. Yeah. Dealing with those shenanigans and, you know, Ricky <laughs> negotiates his way out of that as he normally does. Oh, uh, totally. So. And just they're playing around saying, hey, I like it here in America. <laughs> <laughs> of course. They're at they a sell lot of drugs there. Places. Yeah. And there's always some <laughs> surprise. You never know if someone is going to just pick something up or steal something else and just, you, you just know it's just, Hey, don't get too comfortable. There's got to be something that goes down that's just outrageous. I've got I've got some questions, Cam, for the group. If you if you'll allow me the floor, please, please. What is everybody's favorite moment from the show? Like a moment that oh, just makes you laugh every time you hear it. Oh man. Okay, I'll let you guys go first. <laughs> it yeah, could be a scene, an episode. Uh, I think in general, I want to say any time. Sorry, I say again. Yeah, I couldn't really there. hear you. I said yeah, any, any time. Uh, I said any any moment where J Rock is is spitting a rhyme is is pretty much like I don't know. I I, I like he's he's my favorite character, so I gotta I gotta say anytime he's rapping. It could happen to you. It could happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay, so Heather, go go next. I I think it's when they kidnapped. I think it was Neil Pert from Rush. When oh. <laughs> it was it Neil Pert? I can't Alex remember which Rush. Alex, Alex Lyson from yep. from Rush. Um, That's up there. He's an unwilling like... <laughs> participant, and he's just like that is one of the best episodes. I agree. <laughs> it's just ridiculous, right? At the dude's birthday party, you know. Um, oh my gosh! And you pull in Rush. Like Rush is probably mm-hmm. one of the top popular Canadian bands. Everyone generally yeah. knows who Rush is, right? And <laughs> At the back of three, even the show was incredible. And they always play their music, too, all the time. That's so. what makes that episode so cool. At the end, the last scene is Bubbles and Alex playing guitar together and playing Rush songs. <laughs> right. that, that's what made it such a – it was such a cool ending. That's one of my top – that's one of my favorite episodes. Definitely for sure. top ten moments. Uh, is that your favorite moment of all time as well, or is you got a different one? Oh, for me? Or, or – or, uh, uh, Kyle. Yeah. Pass. You know my favorite one, Cam, because I made you listen to it the other day when you were uh, going to do our yeah. episode. So <laughs> let me let me frame it up. It's season eight, episode one. The episode is Money Can Suck My Cock. And it's uh, <laughs> it's a scene I go back to constantly. And it's, I thought it was in your top ten. <laughs> no, that's it, my favorite one because it yeah, makes absolutely. me laugh every single time. So in the scene... Uh, it's the one that where Julian and Ricky, you know, Bubbles trying to go legit with his... Um, his little shed city, but they steal the sheds by <laughs> pretending it's some kind of like outbreak. Uh, and oh yes. Then so uh, Julian's running rock vodka, or the, he's he's running the the place, but uh, J Rock is is doing the rock vodka stuff in the background. And the scene is J Rock pulling up to Jeremiah's point to talk to Julian. He's like, "We got some shit to talk about here first. He said, "That's why it's doing so well. It's because my shit, you mean." And then and it, pan, it it goes to a scene where he's talking about making rock vodka, and it kills me every single time. Because he's got the little so apple delicious. peeler. He's like, all I need is for Julian to cut me in on a little error, error, igla, igla, round, amp, 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 peace. Every time. Murders that's me, great. that scene. That's that's my favorite oh, moment. Oh, man. That's but I love great. when the boys go to Europe, too. I, there's so much fun when they go to Europe in that movie. Europe was that's, fun. And uh, that whole season. Oh man, yeah. So you've mentioned stuff that would definitely be like the top twenty. I definitely love the failed bank heist in the third movie, but my my personal favorite, I don't know why, might be when like season two or three when Leahy's holding uh, Ricky at gunpoint and it's a whole giant escalated like hostage situation. And oh, it's, it's and after they, they after they see Leahy in the dark, right? He's like, just, boys, I know I might be high as hell, but I think I just saw Leahy in a bathrobe. <laughs> right, right. Uh, 
Randy is having to put himself on the line. All the cops are like, eh, we've just been waiting an excuse to arrest him. And Julian's like, what, what, what the hell? How did we even get here? <laughs> that one's good. It's a total like comedic version of Dog Day Afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Horror, Horror Apocalypse is one of my favorites where Steve Rogers has his bachelor party in uh, all of the sheds and, and Bubbles kitties get crabs. That's oh, really yeah, hilarious. yeah. Love that. Oh, that episode they, was funny. <laughs> and remember, they make they they sneak in like a few ca- like Captain America joke at one point. I think to, it's like, yeah, like like the superhero. No, no, I'm I'm just the news anchor. <laughs> the, the liquor Smurf always kills me oh, when boy. Jim Leahy's so <laughs> drunk he can't even put words together. Uh, that whole <laughs> go to name call. Uh, you know, oh, liquor Smurf. <laughs> <laughs> I met somebody like that, great too, ones, who was so drunk that they couldn't, couldn't put words together. <laughs> like, not going to call you an actual name call. It's just whatever just <laughs> regurgitates in their brain. And mm-hmm. to you guys' earlier point, you know, I lived nearby a few trailer parks, not in an actual one. But I, it was wild how every once in a while I would just kind of tell – you could tell if it was just going to be a bad month because there was one time where it looked like a car had literally just burst through the fence of a trailer park. <laughs> and I was just like – and so yeah looking at this is like yeah i wouldn't be surprised if there were just some shady characters mm-hmm. or just unusual just wow you gotta live next door to this annoying guy <laughs> all right here's here's the next one what's everybody's favorite illegal scheme oh, Ooh. Man. basically Ooh. like what which, which episode architecture did you like the most mm, man because for a while they do the in and out of jail and then they kind of change it up I guess in movie number one, I dug uh, how they're just trying to get away with all those stolen coins. And it's just, it goes in like a total third direction than what yeah. you would even uh, mm-hmm. occur. And that's what I really like about all these twists. It's never one or the other. It's always, wait, what? <laughs> Out of left field. And it's earned. But uh, yeah, Heather, if you got one. Yeah, I'm similar to you, but also the um, J-Rock, Greasy Trailer Park, Girls Gone Wild, I thought it was <laughs> really funny. Like, and I just thought it was a good play at that time. You know what I mean, though? Also, Girls Gone Wild, that was that was really hot around that time period. And I just thought yeah. that was a really smart thing to bring in and incorporate into this show. Like, really smart. This, this show was really smart with pop culture. Mm-hmm. It was smart enough to know what was going on around it and go, well, how right. can I incorporate this into the characters' lives in a way that's going to make fun of it and everyone's going to get what's happening? They hinted at it in right. season one with Ricky and Sam were trying it out. It's like, so it was only inevitable that J Rock and Tyrone <laughs> were going to try it again. <laughs> and I just love how J Rock's like, T, I got this. It's like, no, you don't got this. No one's getting paid. <laughs> we either. We the mayor know what I'm saying. It's too many know what I'm saying, man. My my favorite is definitely this Swayze train and the drug deal with Sebastian Bach. I just love that whole story <laughs> of what they of like an actor, man. Where was this acting talent, you know, all this know. time? <laughs> you could totally see him just be in a in a like buddy comedy, just going out mm-hmm. and just, just losing his shit on people. <laughs> You know he had to enjoy that, hundred percent. He, I, I totally. I mean, he did it multiple times. He did it more than the guitarist mm-hmm. for much. So, I mean, and it, when Snoop arrived, it was just kind of great, just because I mean they had mentioned him a few different times. He had, they had appeared on each other's podcasts and radio shows. So it was like, yeah, to actually have Snoop like appear with them for like two plus seasons during the Netflix years, that was great because basically, you know he's helping them from afar in America. And then it's like, he's having to break them out of jail. Like send some funds their <laughs> way, my man. <laughs> he basically invested a lot of money in their business. <laughs> yeah, yes, he did. <laughs> An easy gig. I got to just play my persona. I don't got to remember any lines. I just got to play around. <laughs> just be the weed loving Snoop Dogg that everybody knows you. Dog. as. So yeah. it's, it's not a leap logically to understand you might be working with some guys like this oh totally and 
to have comedian Doug Benson just be an even cl more clueless idiot than the types of personas he usually plays and have Tom Arnold be a total perv is like, that was gold too. <laughs> I was just like, right? just wanted to bang Lucy. All he wanted like, to do. Oh my God. <laughs> Until he didn't. Until he didn't. Right. Talk about super like fanboy. <laughs> I thought he was going to go through with it. It's such a weird thing to describe to people, too. Like, if people don't know the show, do explain the Tom Arnold role in yeah. that season of being a fan of this fake character in a fake world, but being a real person in the fake world, wanting to bang mm -hmm. the guy's girlfriend. It's just yeah. a very odd thing to try to explain to a non-fan. I think at that time, he was kind of appearing in a few just low-key kind of dramas and, and less sitcoms, and I think he was just ready to just... He was ready to laugh at himself at that point. He's like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I'm playing an even just more bizarre version of myself that's not really me, but whatever. You know, this is fun, and <laughs> it's an experimental, edgy kind of comedy, so I'll do it. <laughs> Any other legal schemes that you all appreciated? Uh, the, the, what was it? The hash parking lot was pretty funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, and they're having to collect tickets. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, oh, I did like. Okay. I also like the um. That made me think of them um, siphoning gas and selling it in the park, and <laughs> yeah, Lakey and Randy trying to get undercover footage of them stealing the cards <laughs> and how you never know <laughs> if Bubbles is gonna do it or Ricky's gonna do it, and they're always on each other's case. Like, don't do it. <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not here to well, steal the cards, but I'm stealing. The season ends with them in the courtroom and Ricky representing oh, himself, yes. negotiating to be allowed to swear and smoke cigarettes while he's defending himself. And Corey and Trevor ha are suffering from like gasoline sickness from huffing so much gas. Oh, yeah. And they just they, frame them. <laughs> they frame themselves. And I mean, all the courtroom scenes are just on the money, great. You get almost just like. It made me wonder if they had like a theater background because it's like to do that like a serious situation and just make it so just outrageous. It's like, I'm sorry, judge, but I'm going to curse. So fuck it. You don't like what I'm going to say and don't hear my case. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll allow it. No, your honor. <laughs> oh, God. And, <laughs> and it does always make you just realize just how inept all these lawyers are. <laughs> it's like it's like they pretty much always incriminate Jim Leahy at one point. It's like, wait a sec, why were you here at this crime scene, which we are or kind of weren't at? <laughs> George Green, Jim Leahy's alt ultra uh, nemesis. Green is just gold because this is like he's just such a clueless idiot. He's trying to always uh, basically. <laughs> hang out with Ricky's, you know, ex-fiance, and it's like, jeez, it's like, what a scumbag, and yet, uh, it's just even wilder how it is like, yeah, he's got that feud with Leahy, who he's always just detested back when he was an actual cop, and it's just, it, when he becomes the trailer park, like, manager, that's even more outrageous, because... <laughs> supervisor, much, sir. Trailer park supervisor. Supervisor, Very supervisor sir, yes. <laughs> Um, uh, all right, two, two other small questions. What is everybody's favorite animal character in the show? Many to pick from. Or one that comes to mind. Steve French. Steve French is a popular one. Yep. Yeah. Taco. <laughs> I forgot. Another one. Taco. <laughs> oh, man. I don't Can remember I any specific animals. I'll be honest um i just enjoy the kitty cats every time they're in it and i guess because i just watched the movie when he picks up the one cat it's like the cat smells like cigarettes and kitties are supposed to smell like kitties it's probably right. my favorite scene is it gary laser animal. eyes i don't remember <laughs> i don't remember i don't remember their names sorry it's okay you're like <laughs> hardcore kyle uh, like... <laughs> i'm pretty hardcore I was, I'm always hardcore, hardcore. But... Or hardcore than J-Rock, but yeah. Because Steve, Steve French is a big one, the big mountain lion right, that, that they have at one point. You got the raccoons um, that are built into one of the episodes. Oh, how about yes. how about Oscar Goldman, the little goldfish that Ricky uh, doesn't understand <laughs> death yes. about? And yes. constantly, constantly drinks, you know, makes the, the goldfish get drunk and they have to yeah. continue replacing it. Uh, I, definitely the goldfish <laughs> is great. If I could, I mean... Does Ricky's car even count as an animal? <laughs> <laughs> well, here, let me reframe it. 
favorite non-human yeah, totally thing. Steve's car. So you can I... call it the shipmobile will count, I guess. The shipmobile, yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, God. And just how many times they wreck it and are trying to disguise it. I mean, even Cyrus has a nice ride. And I'm just, I mean, it's even hysterical what uh, uh, vehicles even the Japanese criminals just will carry around. <laughs> no, Chinese. But, yeah, it's like they're always driving up in something that you're just like, wait, you're driving that? <laughs> and you're still hanging out <laughs> with Cyrus, who's going to rip you off anyway? It's like, man, <laughs> it's great. Same dick. I think the best non-human character is Conky. <laughs> just for what Conky does to Ricky and those interactions with Bubbles, just saying what he always wants to say, but just doing it through Conky is it's, so funny. Uh, Kyle loves him some evil killer dolls like Chucky. So yeah, <laughs> that's it's, true. Yeah, it is funny how it's like yeah, it does make you wonder if that character really is a different character after a while. You know, it's not because <laughs> Bubbles is not a good. Uh, ventriloquist was like yeah it yeah, might as well be <laughs> oh, and just how many times i lost track of how many times they blew its head off it's like at least three different times they conky supposedly gets destroyed and they bring it back <laughs> sometimes they had to, i remember i think it's like season eight or nine they had to get conky back and reattach his head chucky style to get bubbles like out of his rut mm-hmm Oh, it's probably season seven or eight. <laughs> yeah. If anyone knows, in which case, please do. We'll know you're actually listening. <laughs> <Please say something. laughs> so it's late. Yeah, it's one of the later ones. <laughs> uh, that's great. Oh man. <laughs> so, would you say this is probably just one of the more bolder shows to just have this many, just recurring gags and just organize them so well? What was the question? <laughs> uh, uh, many shows, like when they got a bunch of different subplots go, sometimes they kind of lose track of what to do with them after a while. And, you know, with this as a comedy, some gags might not catch fire as well. Um, would you say this is probably one of the more successful shows to have all these various gags and have uh, do a good organization of them all? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, definitely. I I think it was really it was really well organized. You know, that's that's a good point because they did have a lot of subplots that kind of, you know, carried on to uh, different uh, different episodes. And I mean, the fact that we got all these different ones, I mean, that is kind of a first. It's like it used to be everyone kind of just like had maybe three main favorite characters, and that's like all you kind of remembered, and then. Yeah, you remembered certain gags that didn't always land well, but like this, I can't think of any gags where it's like, yeah, that didn't take off or that wasn't funny. It's like, no, I'm pretty much, whatever my mood, I'm pretty much in for it. I just am right mm -hmm. looking forward to whatever disaster the trio has planned, <laughs> and just how Julian is such a muscular guy, and yet he's just basically just a gentle teddy bear. <laughs> I love, uh, I love sexy the sexy uh... Julian. <laughs> uh, I love you, Jim. And, and yeah, just Ricky just going around and you're just wondering if he's going to show his introduce or if he's just going to actually say, oh, I'm doing it for my family. Anything for the drugs, man. <laughs> and the, the way they, the way they're all dressed, I think it's, it's hilarious that the, the Ricky always got like the, the house to kind of design for his, uh, you know, uh, shirt and then track pants. Yeah. Oh yeah, he always got the, he always the, got the, flames, the black yeah. t-shirt. Well, and I read today, I didn't even realize it. He wears the same shirt all season. He changes it every season, <laughs> but if you watch it, like I didn't even really recognize that. On the yeah, front. later seasons they make a case yeah. of just like, got to change your shirt, man. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. a, he's a fashion icon in his own way. A little bit, right? And and also Sarah's <laughs> tattoos would change every season too. Is another thing I, I noticed that. Really I was, I which is, who is John Dunsworth's real life daughter? Which is fun. Yeah. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I yeah I I really dug out. It's like after a while, she pretty much is like the only one with any common sense, and so she will have to, <laughs> uh, she'll have to end up just like helping them be like one of the bartenders at Julian's. You know, she's bar. the protector. Like she protected right. Lucy early on from Ricky. She protected Corey and Trevor from being abused by the boys. She's the protector of the, the park. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if I can really answer your question because I'm not the most 
I'm not an expert when it comes to other TV shows, right? Like I don't, I watch more movies than television shows, but what I will say regarding why Trailer Park Boys is so successful is because they created really compelling and interesting characters and they just write them in a way that allows them to go all in on the absurdity. And I think that's what people really like about the show that are into it is, you know, they took a lot of chances for a lot of the, but you give, you gave characters that people can watch and go, man, I'm, I'm glad that's not me, but it's hilarious <laughs> to watch the, the drama unfold, right? Like we yeah. all, I think to Heather's point earlier, we all know somebody in those types of roles. Like we don't, probably don't know a Ricky same exact same things, but we all know somebody like Ricky who can mm -hmm. smooth talk his way out of anything, but is just dumb, like book dumb, but yeah. <laughs> street smarts wise can just mm -hmm. talk himself out of a wet paper bag. <laughs> so it's relatable. It's compelling. It's hilarious. And that's a great recipe for success. Uh, very well said. And as both you and Heather both mentioned is like, it's never the same formula every season. It, it, it may, it took a chance, but it also chose to not be formulaic. It's like, just when you think everyone's going to prison, it's like, nope, someone else is going to prison. You guys get the part this time. Yeah, or, someone's going to prison. You just don't know who it's going to be. One, <laughs> like, all. Who's going to control the trailer park? And I think it was like season four or five by that point. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is like, then they decided, it's like, this thing, we're, we're not going to even hang around in the trailer park. And I think that's before you get to season six with the colonel guy who's going around saying, this is my trailer park uh, now. I think that's that's Leslie Dancer. And I think it's like, that's, I think, when the show starts to go down is when Leslie Dancer comes in. I think that's season 10. Nine or 10. Annoying. <laughs> <Yeah. sucked. laughs> I'm I glad you said answer. about the later seasons. I'm not a big fan of the later seasons. I I feel like there was a magic in the 2000s when the show first came out. And I, and I think it again the characters in pop culture. They were just smart. They knew what to play upon at the time. Yep. And they knew what they could get away with doing. And then, you know, you watch that back and you think, "Oh, 2006, that shit's funny because I remember 2006." <laughs> so this is funny. And it's hard to keep that mentality as things change, like any good show, you mm -hmm. know, as, as, as the world changes, it's hard to keep that humor or the references similar. But I agree. I think the characters were a really, really strong point. And it, like, let's look at the simplicity of the sets, simplicity of really they what they were doing, the right? Set, yeah. Like it was a really simple show and, mm. but you, and people played a role and that was the role they played. And they, and they, you really got the idea that that's who they were. Like if you ran into like bubbles, you'd be like, that's who you are bubbles. You're not, what are you, why are you not acting like bubbles? Like it's, it was very, very smart what they did at the time. And I think and that, to it. Pushed it for, I mean, yeah, <laughs> exactly. They stayed in character. Right. And I think that that makes people buy into it. Yep. Right? Now this is on Netflix. Did you, any of you, ever check out like the first short film they first did uh no i haven't watched it completely but i've seen snippets of it it's so black wild. and white isn't it it's black yeah, and white yeah. they made it in like 98 and yeah. i guess someone saw it somewhere and that's i mean i can't think of any other show besides this probably besides like mystery science theater where it was just someone knew someone else and just convinced them hey you know i'm gonna pick the programmer's brain we got some wacky idea we if you just give us some time and money we, we'll give you just such an outrageous just concept and and just watching it i, I could totally see why again it's the uh all uh the portrayers of again uh ricky julian and uh Leahy are all in it and you can totally see how they've just known each other for just, just so long and they're just so comfortable around each other and i think I mean, it kind of reminds me of Monty Python. It's like, these guys have just mm, known each other yeah. since ever. And so it's like, they're going to just be comfortable just coming up with ideas around each other. It's like, no no hog in the screen. Everyone's going to get a moment in the sun. <laughs> That's a good point, Cam. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. That's a good comparison. Because you just see so many, it just saddens you so often when you just see many different shows where everyone's like, Hey, I'm thank you for the fanfare, but I can't stand to be around that. So no reunion anytime soon, you know? Yeah. You're not going to, if they do a reunion, it's not going to be anyone was sour about it or, uh, you know, we're, we're not doing a convention or music reunion yeah. together. It's like, they'll gladly hang out with each other. <laughs> well, they owned it, right? Like they, they were yeah. involved in the creative aspect of it. Like this isn't mm -hmm. like, um, like Dexter, 
you know, like it's that's formulated, written, you know, I hear it's a great show. I don't watch a lot of TV either, Kyle. I watch a lot of movies as well. I'm right mm-hmm. there with you. Yep. Um, but this was very much like homegrown. So you're going to have dudes that are responsible for the content and they got to play out their creativity fantasies. So of course they're going to like each other more, right? Well, and totally. it's, it's so unrefined, the early seasons, mm-hmm. right? Like it's, yeah. a, it's clearly, I think what, drove people a little nuts in the late seasons on Netflix, especially seasons 11 and 12, is it's the production value is just so different to a point where yeah. it, it lacks the authenticity of the, the boys in the hijinks. Like, that's what people came for. The yeah. predictability of a scheme is going to go awry. Like we say, what's predictable in life? Death taxes. It's death taxes and people at Sunnyvale not understanding how to handle money when they have it. They will do something terrible with it and end up right back where they were at square one. That's what people love, the predictability, but then just the ridiculousness that would come with these characters and how they're going to elude Jim Leahy, who's trying to, you know, put them in jail, right? Or kill them in some cases. As, as not like <laughs> Depending the on the season. <laughs> right? Like it's just, it just didn't feel very commercial, you know? It felt very raw. It's swear, a ton of swearing, which you don't see on television very often. So I think all of those elements made it pretty appealing to people because it felt like a fan service show, not Mm a some exec telling a bunch of showrunners exactly what needs to be done. Right. Even uh, even like you said, with the production, you know, that that authenticity, you know, shows in the in the production value and makes it more interesting. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I would have preferred they had kept that visual look. And I didn't know if it was just easier to just. If that was part of the deal, we'll carry it, but it's got to look different. I didn't know what the compromise was, so yeah. The intentionally grainy, making it look like it was made in the early 2000s. Right on a video camcorder. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So yeah, it was a raw show in a lot of ways, and being a mockumentary, like what we do in the shadows, one of my favorite shows now. Like. Yeah. Trailer Park Boys walked, so what we do in the shadows could run. That's a good a, parallel because that's also mm-hmm. basically a mockumentary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Another show where they go, you know, the Baron goes, "What's this camera crew doing here?" Like, oh, they <laughs> yes. leave them alone. <laughs> they oh, do that man. so much in Trailer Park Boys, right? Oh, especially in the movies, is like, well, you just fuck off already. And uh, I also miss when they would actually just do just random contests and just have just an outrageous outcome when Bubbles is attempting to rap and. In the movie, they have a basketball game where Ricky's like, I want to go back to prison early. And he's like, you you got the holiday off. Oh, but I, w- I, w- I want to win the basketball game. <laughs> like when they build the ring and the green bastard comes out to play. And, oh, uh, yes. Yes, the wrestling was a fun thing because it made me wonder is like, if they had to face that off with someone they knew, especially with that. Yeah. It's uh, so when Jim Leahy wants to win, like, Trailer Park Supervisor of the Year, and uh, yeah, even though town. it doesn't matter, he wins either way. Yeah. But he, he well, they, well, because <laughs> Ricky is at the time the supervisor, but then the, the, uh, Barb convinces him to pretend like it's Leahy because Leahy wants to win the award, even though he's not running the show. Right, anything to just shut him up and just make yep. him, he's won. Yeah, and Ricky just Ricky's can't the do liability. That. Ricky's a liability, liability, and. <laughs> He just can't stand being shit talked by Lady, and so it never goes well. It's amazing watched... how you jump. Sorry, go ahead. I was I was thinking of the uh, the episode where they like close off part of the park where Ricky's living, and he's got all the satellite dishes on top, and oh, then the yes. guys come through and he's just ripping them off and throwing it on this dude's car, and you just hear Donnie go, "Ricky, where the fuck's my cable?" <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This is so perfectly timed too. <laughs> it's like, because uh, it's like for a while, yeah, you're you're always anticipating the kids who are gonna throw bottles, but yeah, it's in just having the next door neighbor just lose hurts. it out of all things on the cable, and that's the loudest of when <laughs> he yells. Is like, yeah, I'd be pretty pissed too if I had to be in this trailer park and I, the cable's not working. Oh man. <laughs> so I feel like you all have summed up a lot of the best gags and by the show just will be continually rewatched. Um, uh, well, if there's any other just final closing thoughts. If not. I'm just really glad to talk to Kyle because Kyle's like a super fan and <laughs> I learned a, re- a lot. And Kyle, I don't know where you live in the United States, but uh you're welcome up to Canada anytime. I live just oh. outside of Toronto, Ontario. So I don't know when 
our things aren't so bad with COVID, you know, in five years. So you're welcome to come and we can go to Dartmouth. <laughs> I actually have a friend that lives out in Nova Scotia and we can go <laughs> where it was filmed if you would like. Really? Ooh. Absolutely. Make your dreams come true, Kyle. But oh, you no. have to role play all the characters each separate day. <laughs> now I, I know. Can't. <laughs> now I know who's gonna be doing a Q and A panel. Uh, with, do like a 20th anniversary reunion <laughs> with the <Absolutely>. cast and crew. <laughs> I I would love it. I can only do Ricky or uh, Bubbles and Leahy. I'm, I don't think I'm very good at the other cosplaying, hey. but. <laughs> You know what? You don't have to. I do have my kitties. Have to try. We learned that from Trailer Park Boys. It's fine. (laughs) Have you seen anyone actually dress up in your your neck of the woods, Heather? Like for Halloween? Well, I'm in Ontario, right? So, like, yeah, back in 2006, and when it was really hot, yes. (laughs) Like back in the early 2000s, oh, people would quote the show. They would dress up. Now I feel like the later seasons have kind of no one really follows it as much. But my generation, and I don't mind, I'm 38. So people of my age, oh, yeah, like if you walked around in cosplays, you would get a whole bunch of 40-year-olds being like, oh, fuck yeah, right? Like they would be the ones that would read Totally. Them, right? Absolutely. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to let – sorry, go ahead. I had a fun – so I'll leave you with two stories related to the Park Boys. One, one of my good friends who also dressed up with me in these jerseys, so I got the Bubbles one. He got the Ricky one. We went out for Halloween, and I'm in, I live in Indianapolis, Heather. And we went out the one night gallivanting around. He had his facial hair like Ricky, and we ran into another guy dressed up as Ricky in the jersey. And it was a funny, it was a hilarious moment to watch these two doing Rickyisms back and forth. But mm-hmm. two, everybody would ask us like, "Where's Julian?" Because it was just the two of us, right? And everybody expects. So we just kept. All I would say to people the whole night is fucking Julian's in jail right now. He's fucking living it up. <laughs> and the other story was that same friend of mine who's one of, one of the people who got me into it, Chris. He his aunt worked on the like conference uh, circuit in Canada for a while. Nice. And one day he got a random phone call from his aunt, like out of the blue, like all right, whatever. I'll answer the phone. He answers the phone. And it is none other than J Rock in J Rock yes. voice talking to him on the phone. He said, "What's up, boy?" And like his his aunt was working, said, "Hey, my nephew's a huge fan of the show. Would you mind if I called him if you just talk to him for a minute as J Rock?" And he did, uh, oh. Jonathan Torrin. So you say like, you think that same relative got them to film in those courtrooms? Yeah, <laughs> doubtful, <laughs> doubtful, yeah. but. I just thought that was such. I, I would lose my mind if I picked up my phone and it was bubbles. And, hey. I can say Jonathan Torrance is actually a really nice guy. He's well known he's in Canada like as being a really. He's had a talk show. He's done a lot of other Canadian stuff. Mm-hmm. He's a very nice person. So that doesn't surprise me. And they're just they're just fearless. I mean, like Julian will uh, actor will joke about his big you know hunking nature i mean and obviously you know randy had the biggest one of having to make fun of his you know uh body situation and you know and then and, smoky and like <laughs> right and, and randy aka and, smoky when he's got to whore himself out <laughs> yeah right <laughs> for cheese, for hey when you need a cheeseburger you need a cheeseburger you do what you got to do sometimes Andrew. you got to sell that ass <laughs> you, get that cheeseburger, you know what i mean right? <laughs> yeah. The way of the road. <laughs> the <way laughs> what I learned. That's what I learned. You got to hustle for your shit. That's what I learned at Sunnyvale. <laughs> oh, man. That's great. So I'm going to let you guys uh, now plug uh, your shows. Uh, Heather, uh, what can we expect next on the Friday Nightmares? Oh, man. Well, I, first of all, you can find us at Legion Podcast Network. We're under the Kill the Cast feed, Friday Nightmares. Thank you so much, Cam, for having me on. Uh, we've been doing some top five shows, taking a break from our usual format. So we've done a top five winter episode, best horror films in the winter, top five horror remakes for all those people who hate remakes. They'll love it. And we're going to be doing a top <laughs> five horror comedy uh, show as well. But we have a regular scheduled show where we, we just talk about new movies that have come out and we pick a theme and we dissect it in terms of horror movies. So um, if you're not following us, please follow us on the Legion Podcast Hello. Network. <laughs> what's the, what's your Twitter handle? Oh my gosh, we don't have Twitter, but thank you, Kyle. Now I feel like I better get it, like right now. I don't have to. You. <laughs> to follow you if you were on. Uh, we have what's a Facebook my... page, like true thirty-eight-year-old old people do. So you know, 
That, and that's, that's not my okay. world. That's, that's not okay. your world. That's not my world, but that's okay. <laughs> We're on Twitter world. and Instagram. <laughs> what's it. a what's a horror movie you guys have dissected recently? Uh, well, we did retail horror, so we did Dawn of the Dead. We also did Chopping Mall. We did yeah. Phantom of the Mall, Eric's Revenge, which was from that first time <laughs> watched. Show out the Poly Shore. And uh, we did Slacks, which is a 2019 or 2020 Canadian horror film that was released oh, yes. in 2021 um, for the rest of the general public. So we do stuff like that. We pick like Black Friday was the theme because it, we dropped it on Black Friday, talked about the history of Black Friday, and then threw in some retail horror. That's stellar. If I ask too many questions, Cam, just cut out, just cut me out of the post. <laughs> I, it's all good. I love the interrogation. But um, so Munson's at the movies. You want to promote that show real fast? I'll do it if you allow it. I'm, I'm, nice. I'm okay with that. I came here mostly just because I love Trailer Park Boys and you asked me to be here. So I'm happy to do that. But if if someone listening is like, hey, this Kyle guy is semi-interesting. Where would I hear his voice in other places? <laughs> so I'm the host for a podcast called Munson's at the Movies. There's five of us plus guests. I'm inspired by the film Kingpin, hence Munson's, where's, where it comes from. That's good a major reason we all came together in the first place. But the gist of the show is we've got a list of like 800 plus actors. We randomly <laughs> number generate five of them. We put them on a wheel, we spin the wheel, and then we cover the career of whichever actor is selected from that process. <laughs> so we just released episode 50. By the time this comes out, we'll be on like probably around episode 60. The late 50s, somewhere in there. <laughs> now, no, we release one every two weeks. Um, and Cam would just joined us actually, so yes, we'll, he'll be on episode 51 oh, uh, on Dennis Haysbert, which we'll release tomorrow actually. Um, but again, we're in the future, so by this point, it'll be out for three months. Uh, so <laughs> um, you can follow us on Twitter, Munson's at Movies, or you can follow us on Instagram, Munson's at the Movies. Please do harass us, send us your thoughts. <laughs> There's a good chance there's an actor in our catalog that you like, and we do a full deep dive on them. We cover all the things, not just their top roles. <laughs> we talk about their drama. We talk about their early days as a performer. We discuss their the good, the bad, and the ugly of their performances, and we rate them on our Munson meter. Oh, it's great, especially when you get to the 100 scale. It's like, hey, a great actor, but, man, not enough range. Or, well, a great resume, but... You, know, you get to the 2000s, ooh. It's ugly. Yeah, yeah. You you figure out the gaps. You figure out like where they were strong. Maybe they were great in the 90s, but then they, you know, Daryl Hannah was really fascinating. One like amazing the 80s and 90s, but recently just in turd after turd of movies, and her, she's just not as relevant. Because, but it had a lot to do with the personal, um, kind of her personal world and taking political stances, and that kind of murdered her career in a lot of ways. So it's kind of sad to see it, but she stood up for what she believed in. So that's the kind of stuff we dig into. We try to tell the full story of the performer. Totally. Uh, all right. Well, excellent. And Jeremiah, you do not have a podcast, but uh, uh, would you <laughs> like to promote what you're currently watching and that everyone should binge watch? <laughs> um... Talk about your <laughs> uh, I, I... Well, I do got one show. Uh, Mr. In Between is pretty good. <laughs> yes. I love a pretty good show. Uh, FX now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, on uh, Hulu. And, I don't know. I, I, I highly recommend that. By all means. Okay, well, thank you all ever so much. This was just a great quadruple chat. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it was nice to meet with. all of you. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, it was nice meeting all of you. Thanks, Kim. And, and everyone be safe out there. <laughs> We'll return after these messages. Hey, feeling down? Feeling low? Not enough podcasts about movies in your life? Why not try... They must be destroyed on sight! The new Podcast Cure-All. Sure to get you right with the world and on a path to better living. We have exploitation, we have Italian horror, we have zombies, we have slashers, we have crime films, we have spaghetti westerns, we even have sci-fi and sex comedies. So take a dose of... They must be destroyed on sight! As needed, and let the hosts, Lee Russell, Daniel Harper, Paul Romali, and the odd guest host, Cure What Ails Ya. Warning, may cause atrophy, African consumption, black fever, bone shave, chin puff, colic, cramp colic, 
dropsy of the brain, elephantitis, grocer's itch, jaundice, mania, miasma, mortification, palsy, pox disease, rheumatism, scurvy, St. Anthony's fire, summer complaint, and worm fit in some people. Consult a physician before listening. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Oh, necrophilia. Oh, oh, oh. It's a dead issue, man. Don't, don't push it. Cinema PsyOps is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked, crude. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am, in the most serious of senses, disappointed in it. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. Oh, I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of here. unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this movie. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you shouldn't be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this movie. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this, like, little nerd glee with everything that kept Little history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you, you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped from watching this shit at 12 years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was How did you watch movie. this shit at 12? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. Hey, everybody. I'm Corey. And I'm Zach. And we're the hosts of Podcasting After Dark, a cast dedicated to late-night horror and sci-fi of the 80s and 90s, often found on HBO and Cinemax. You know, the movies your parents didn't want you watching as a kid. You can find us every other week on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, and Stitcher. This is what you want. This is what you get. It's time, let's check our cue, baby. Pair it with a couple of brews, baby. We love your movies. We love the bad ones too. So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you. Oh yeah. Ban out, ban out, ban out, ban out. Ban out, ban out, ban out, ban out. Everything I learned from movies Helps to make life a little bit groovy With a one last splat holes like a two in a It's time to get busy With your friend Steve and Izzy At eilfm.podbean.com Welcome to Who Was She Podcast I am your host, Tara Jabari After a decade working in documentaries, marketing, and all things digital media, I found that podcasting is a strong medium to share stories. After years of producing for others, I decided to start my own biographical podcast. Who Was She? will focus on the life of a woman throughout Baha'i history. The first season is about Lydia Zeminoff. Lydia's story explores the subjects of the power of language and faith. Her father invented the universal language Esperanto, and she came from a Jewish family and became a Baha'i. She grew up during World War I and was killed during World War II in a concentration camp, despite heroic efforts to save her life. How can one person's life intersect with so many others? connect across borders, and inspire a biography which inspired this podcast. Over the next few weeks, I will share her story with you and the lives that were most affected by her and those who affected her life as well. They include her father, Ludwig Semenov, her spiritual mother, American journalist Martha Root, and the Baha'i German soldier Fritz Mako, who worked for the resistance undercover while having to serve the Nazi party. I want to thank the author Wendy Heller and George Ronald Publishing for their blessing to let me use Heller's biography, Lydia, The Life of Lydia Zeminoff, Daughter of Esperanto, as a main and instrumental resource for this podcast. So please subscribe and learn about this amazing woman, who traveled through three continents in an effort to bring unity through the power of language. 
You can also find more information on our Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest at Who Was She Podcast. Music was composed and performed by Sam Red. I am your host, Tara Jabari. Join us next time as we begin our journey about Lydia Zeminoff. Are you sick of the same old stale podcasts? Well, then join Vanessa and Darren as they dissect movies of all kinds. The two lifelong cinema lovers bring their favorites, curiosities, and first-time watches to the operating table and inject them with a healthy dose of snark. Then there's the waiting room where they examine books and short stories. So just look for them on Apple Podcasts and where fine podcasts are available. They're part of the Legion Podcast Network. Follow them on Twitter at VD Clinic Pod. Join them on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash VD Clinic Pod. Or email them at vdclinicpod at gmail.com. They're ready to cure what ails you. <laughs> and still, they just might be a little contagious. Hi there. It's Heather from the Watching Netflix Without You podcast. Did you know that there are over 1,200 Netflix original feature films and documentaries? And that number is only growing. So I've made it my mission to watch as many as I possibly can. Then, with a delightful guest or guests, disclaimer, more often than not my brother Ryan, we spend an episode rating, reviewing, and discussing a film at length. The first half of every episode is spoiler-free for those who haven't seen it yet. And in the second half, after a very clear spoiler warning, we dive into it. And that's really about it. You can listen to Watching Netflix Without You on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and more. We now continue with our program. Follow us on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a